There is a texture to old memories. A physical grain. You see it when you hold a negative up to the light, or when you hear the quiet, rhythmic clatter of a film projector. It's the feeling of a moment impressed onto a physical object, an artifact of time. The silver halides in the emulsion, the dye clouds in the celluloid. The medium isn't just a container for the memory, it's part of it. This is a Sankyo 8R, a machine built to create those artifacts. It's a beautiful piece of mechanical engineering from a world that has, for the most part, moved on. It feels permanent, solid in the hand. But its purpose was to capture light on a medium that was designed to fade, to warp, to become brittle. A medium that was, by its very nature, ephemeral. Brand new brownie scope side turret movie camera by Kodak. The goal here isn't to build a better camera. In every technical sense, this will be a downgrade from a modern mirrorless or even a phone. The goal is to see if the character of these old lenses translates to a new medium. So, what does the ghost of a machine have to say when you give it a new voice? Push go. No clue what I'm doing. Smash it on the ground. Where is this going? Manual not found. Instructions are not me. Make it up as we go. Failure in 3D. When you open it up, you realize it's mostly empty space. A hollow shell built around a single, fragile purpose. To guide a strip of film past a beam of light. A still camera freezes an instant. But a motion camera is a temporal recording device. A way to archive a series of moments. And that's where our real work begins. We're going to take this half-empty shell and give it a new purpose. A new heart. We're not building a time machine. We're building a bridge. A way to let this machine from the past see the future. The first act is always one of careful deconstruction. There's a certain reverence to it. You can smell the old lubricant, a scent that has been sealed away inside for half a century. This is the last time this mechanism will ever churn. The last time this spring will be wound. We're not just removing parts. We're disassembling a process. A workflow that existed for decades. The path the film would have taken, the pressure plate, the gate it would have passed through, it's all being erased wiped clean to make way for something new. All that remains is a pile of intricate metal, a clockwork heart that has been silenced. The new film is this, a tiny CMOS sensor module, originally the eye of a drone. We're not using the drone's lens. The light will still pass through the original Sankyo glass through the triple turret that gives this camera so much of its character. And the new darkroom is a small DVR board that will write our footage to a memory card. But the translation of that light into a record, that's where the experiment really begins. How will these optics designed for an eight millimeter film frame resolve on a tiny modern sensor? 
This camera was never meant to have a battery. Its life force was kinetic, the turn of a handle converting human energy into the potential energy of a coiled spring. It was a direct physical contract between the operator and the machine, a ritual before filming could begin. That's being replaced by the quiet, chemical potential of a LiPo battery. The loud mechanical whir of the spring drive is being replaced by a silent digital hum. The assembly is in one moment, but a process of iteration. It starts in CAD, designing a bracket to hold the sensor in the exact position of the original film plane. Then it becomes physical. Prototype after prototype comes off the 3D printer. The first is a millimeter too wide. The second cracks under pressure. The third is close, but the wire routing isn't right. Each new module, power regulator, a switch, demands more space in a body that has none to give, forcing compromises and restarts. Then comes the delicate work of soldering the components carefully routing wires through channels that were never meant to hold them, and integrating a new button to act as a start-stop trigger. It's a puzzle being solved in three dimensions. Each problem is a lesson. Each failure sends you back to the screen, back to the printer. And then, it works. The body is the same, the weight in the hand is a perfect ghost of its former self. But the way it sees is entirely different. The image has a strange, unexpected quality. The drone sensor, lacking an infrared cut filter, is sensitive to light beyond the visible spectrum. The green of leaves shifts to a vibrant, surreal pink. It's a look that works for black and white, but for color, it's a problem for another day. This image combines the softness and vignetting of the old lens with the sharp, unforgiving nature of a modern sensor. It's no longer capturing moments to be developed and eventually forgotten in a shoebox. It's creating something immediate, something that can be shared, copied, and preserved without decay. We seek permanence in a fleeting world, but maybe that's the wrong goal. Maybe memory isn't about capturing a perfect echo of the past, it's about the act of creation itself. In the translation of a mechanical process to a digital one, something is lost, but something new is born. We don't just remember the past, we create it, over and over. With every new frame,